Hello everyone and welcome back to Working with Plotly. In this episode, we are going to continue working with our PUBG dataset. So we're working with already our pre-built dataset to build a 3D plot and set it up so that the plot goes to your Plotly online account. We will also touch on a quick example of a 2D density plot before we get to the 3D plot because more examples always helps working with Plotly. Let's get started by launching our Jupyter Notebooks also, as we are moving along with the plots, if you have any other data sets that you might be working with, try them out in our plots. It's a great idea to experiment with them, to work with other data to help reinforce what we are going over here. That being said, let's jump right into Jupyter and get started. All right, we have our Jupyter notebook open. We finished up the last episode creating that bar chart from the PUBG, making those comparisons, but we are in episode four now and we can grab the data set or the data frame that we used from the previous video. We can continue using that. If you want to run a visualization, I like to remember when I'm working just so I can see the columns if I need a quick reference. So I have this built in here. You can run it for the 10, the header of the 10, the values within the data frame. And I have this quick example of a 2D density plot with Plotly. Now a 2D density plot or 2D histogram, it's really an extension of the histogram showing the distribution of values within our data across a range of two quantitative variables. It's a pretty simple way of examining a correlation to see where this data is plotted as we can see here. But one quick thing I wanted to note with this example, and I'm gonna leave it in the notebook so you can experiment with it, is that one, we are using the approach to Plotly as in setting our X and Y with our data. Now I'm experimenting with some different columns throughout this. So you can as well try and swap in different columns. If you want to see some values, we have these solo wins for X solo time survived for Y. We need our color scale, always having Plotly's color scale. You can pull up color scale references within the Plotly documentation. In addition, a new piece of information that you may see here is the reference to the figure creation of FF, the create 2D density. Now, if we scroll up to find our Plotly graph objects as go, some of the plots within Plotly are built with the graph objects. The standard plots that we have seen have been using the graph objects, but some of the plots within Plotly also use what Plotly references as the figure factory to create other types of plots, we can reference it as FF. So this 2D density plot needs the figure faculty reference, and we can call it with the figure equal to our FF create 2D density plot. Again, using our X and Y, setting our color scale and the histogram color scale. You can also change the point size. Again, wrapping it up, a simple straightforward. Plotting it is the I plot. We're gonna get into the other method after we build our 3D plot of getting it online and you can give it a file name if you're moving it online and we can plot it. Let's scroll down a little bit and I have the reference again so I can have the columns displayed when we're working building this 3D graph. So let's put together the 3D graph right now. And as a first step, let's just add a comment as our 3D plotly visualization, just so I can have a reference in the Jupyter Notebook. I'm gonna run this cell and the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do here is set our X, Y, and Z. We're working with this 3D visualization. So similar to all the approaches that we've had, we're gonna use X, we're gonna set it equal to our DF, our data frame, our bar graph that we're using, the DF bar PUBG. And we want to grab the solo wins. Remember it is case sensitive. We can also just grab this because we're gonna be changing it for Y and Z, save us some time. So let's set the Y equal to solo, let's use time survived. Time survived, let's just check that real quick. Yep, we have solo time survived. We can actually run a couple more. Let's change that, that's fine. And for Z, let's try the solo rounds played. Solo, we need to swap this in. As in rounds played, now it's an experimentation with the values. So again, you can reference other values, other columns if you want of the data. I'm gonna switch this back to one just so I can save some space there. I'm gonna run that. So we have our X, Y, and Z created. We can actually, let me go back into that cell because I wanna keep it contained within the one cell. In Plotly, remember, we work with the trace. So what we wanna do, we need to set our trace one equal to 
go plot the graph objects as go and we're using the scatter this is a 3d scatter plot so we'll have our scatter 3d what we have to do here since we're working in trace one it has to know where the data is coming from we're going to set our x equal to x we need a comma same thing our y equal to y and as you can imagine our z equal to z let's also comment that out or excuse me let's add a comma we don't need a comment there right now let's return we need to set the mode keeping it pretty standard here just use markers we need another comma to return that we need a marker equal a dict and we're going to set some specifications here and these are all customizations that you can try we need to specify the size as a first step so we need to open this let's return that we need a uh, size let's use 12 here we need to set a color we also need to set a color scale now the color you can use a color set to an array so experimentation helps with this the color scale you can choose the color scale based on presets within plotly if you would like let's use the color scale equal to the color scale of Veritas. Okay, we need a, another comma since we're continuing, and we also have to set the opacity. This is another final value that you can experiment with. The opacity is gonna help, especially depending on the type of data that you have when you build your visualization, and we can experiment it when we finally plot this. It'll help either make it more visible or more easier to see. Sometimes if the opacity is higher, it's gonna make the values a little more difficult again just depends on the data so let's give ourselves some space here and we can finally set the data we're going to set the data for our plot equal to trace one to contain our data and now we're going to go through the layout and build the plot okay we can continue moving down we have our trace one set let's start establishing the layout so we're using the go referencing our plotly Graph object says go dot layout, the capital L here. We need to open this to set our margin equal to a dict. Because we're working with this 3D scatter plot, we have to set the following parameters. We need the L equal to zero. We need the R equal to zero. Let's add a comma. B equal to zero with a comma. And T equal to zero with a comma. And we're going to return this to another line because so we're going to close that out so we can finally build the figure. Now, this is something new. And to reference this, let's jump into the Plotly documentation. We can see here, working with our margin, we can set the following. We need to set a number greater than or equal to zero to set the left margin, right margin, top, and bottom within this 3D plot. All right, we can start building our figure, but first, some errors crept in here, and you want to fix that. That is supposed to be a zero. I can remove this comma, and also, we do not want a comma there. We need r equal to zero. So let's start building our figure, and if you can try and think what we need to build our figure here, we need our data and our layout. We're also going to be using the go, so the plotly graph objects here, to build our figure. So the reference would be go.figure, open parentheses. We need our data equal to data. It's what we're using our data as trace one, our trace one set to our XY data here that we are pulling from our data frame. And we also just need to specify the layout specifications as layout. Finally, we can build our plot. We're gonna use the I plot for now since we're in Jupyter Notebooks. And here we need to really essentially just call our figure since that's what we wanna plot. We want fig as in figure. And we need to specify a file name. You don't have to do it at this moment, but we're gonna be moving this online after we build it. So we do need a file name. We need file name and you can call it what you want. I'm gonna call it the 3D-PubG plot. That's what I'm gonna give the name for our 3D plot here and we can run it. So let's run this. We have invalid syntax. My apologies, this should be open. Actually, file name, we should have an equal sign there that error can be very helpful. So let's run that. And there you have it. We have our 3D plot of our data. We can see a pretty strong correlation. The great thing about this is that you can actually zoom in. You can turn the axes around to visualize this as well. But always with Plotly has these great built-in tools that we can specify. We can see some correlation amongst the data and some outliers as well. 
but it's a great way to visualize this data and other data. Some other data sets might be suited better to this 3D plot, but now that we know we can actually put together a 3D plot, we can start building other data into it. It's a great tool to use with Plotly. Now that we have this plotted, we can get the plot online. In order to do so, I'm going to grab this reference that I have saved right now. I'm going to add some space here. This is to set the plot online. So if you don't have a account with Plotly right now, please pause the video, go online and register. It is free. When you register, if you go to the top right hand corner where your username is, if you go into the settings, you'll be able to find one, you have your username, but you'll also be able to find your API key. This is demo account and this is a demo API key. You will need the credentials to get your plots online when you have them. Please change these out. Use your username and your API key. Please also don't share your API keys because that is personal to your profile. And once you have that, you can actually add this. I have it added in here. You would want pi.iplot to bring it online. So if you have the correct username for your account, your API key, your credentials are lined up, you can use the pi.iplot. When you launch it, it's going to run the same visualization. So we're going to have the same graph. But if you navigate to Plotly, go to your right hand corner, click the my files and you go to your account, you should see something along the lines as this. I have it zoomed in. And when you click on it, it should launch the plot that you'll be able to view online. So you'll be able to access it online with your profile. It's a very useful tool if you have to put together any presentations. Maybe you possibly don't need the built environment. You just need to reference your plot to demonstrate something within the visualizations. Again, it's a great tool to use. And there are some further extensions and use cases with Plotly. This is just the first step to get it online. All right, excellent work so far. We've built some great visualizations. We know now how to get the plot, the plot online to our account. If you have any questions, comments, ideas with Plotly, please feel free to share them. In the next video, we're gonna continue advancing with our knowledge of Plotly to build more complex plots and visualizations. We just put together the 3D scatter plot. On that note, we can wrap things up. As always, please subscribe to the Super Data Science channel. It's a great way to stay up to date with what's going on in the industry, and I will see you in the next video.